So we're going to go straight over into our next session. That was quite a lively session. And uh, again, when we announced that our next guest was going to be with us, we almost broke the internet because of course, we're going slightly outside of the field of food and into the realms of sport. And it's my great pleasure to bring on seven times world snooker champion, Mr. Stephen Hendry. Stephen, are you there? Hey, Stephen. I can just hear you in the background. We're going to bring you on. While we're just waiting for Stephen, uh, let's just remind everybody that, of course, we would love for people to be able to uh, come and watch this. You can do that by subscribing to our live YouTube channel. Uh, also, everybody that's been on so far with all the supplies and the recipes, you can see that on our own website, which is virtualfoodfestival.org. The main generator, really, the main driver behind all of this, as well as celebrating and sharing information, is being able to raise some cash to support these fantastic suppliers and producers. You can do that. Everybody can still do that today. And you can do that by jumping on the crowdfunder website. You can access that too from our Hello. website, and you can pledge and donate and help generate a bit of cash. There he is, Mr. Henry. I'm here, I'm here, yeah. Oh, you. Stephen, could you just put your, uh, is it your phone on landscape? There you go, Carl. Yes, it's, 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 is that Yeah, perfect. perfect. Great. Yeah, really well. And, uh, Sorry about that, technical issue. <laughs> no, it's not technical at all, pal. It was perfectly fine. As you know, no, this is not a super slick and five star operation. <laughs> I have been watching, it's been uh, fun. I need, I need, to, get, I need to get a bottle of that Black Cow vodka. Mark Hex just talked about it. I was watching Mark. <laughs> we'll definitely sort that out for you, not a problem, fella. Whereabouts in the world are you, Stephen? I'm in Sunningdale, just near Ascot. Right, cool. And uh, I've got to ask the question. Um, we're used to seeing well, you. I think, on, yeah. That's all right, mate. We're, we're used to seeing you at a different table, uh, yeah. more the snooker table than the dining table. Is it? Have you always been a foodie? Um, since I started traveling the world, yeah, and started experimenting um, from the age of maybe mid twenties, um, the Far East mostly, um, yeah. as we'll see in my, my dish today. But um, yeah, and getting more. My first time in China was 1987, um, and I hated it. I was eating McDonald's and, and all sorts. I wouldn't eat, touch anything. I hated the food. Now, having been there for like so many years, I'll try try anything. Some of the stuff I've tried is, um, yeah, pretty weird. Yeah, let's not talk about the bat. But uh, yeah, you're right. I think uh, it's it's quite broad, quite varied, and 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 sort of like Chinese regional food is very uh, different from perhaps the stuff that we get to see which has been slightly anglicized over here. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I very rarely actually go to Chinese restaurants in the UK now because there's, and you go to London, there's one or two in Chinatown that, 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 that serve quite authentic Chinese food, but generally if you go to your normal high street, China is nothing to what you get in China. Yeah, and uh, so tell us a little bit about the dish you're going to prepare for us, fella. Yeah, it's um, it's basically it's a quite a simple dish: stir fried pork, Thai style stir fried minced pork. Um, the mince is Wink Winkfield pork from from Lewis of Sunningdale, my my, my local supplier. Um, and it's a dish that whenever I've been to Thailand, it's kind of as soon as I get in my room, I go to room service, and this is what I order. Um, it's, it's it's very simple. Um, I've got some sticky rice on the go that nice. will go with it. So um, yeah, do you want me to, to go ahead? Go for it, go for it, pal. Okay, so I've got um, I've got my ingredients. Basically, I've got some shallots, garlic, minced pork, uh, coconut milk, curry paste, fish sauce, sugar, and some Thai basil to go at the end. Any basil will do, but Thai basil. So, in with the oil. I must say, I'm more nervous about this than I used to be for World Championship. See, I can't believe that. I mean, there you are, walking out of the cru walking out of the crucible, just you know, sticking in a one four seven break, and you know, all of those eyes on you. 
but uh, it's uh, it's quite it's quite incredible. I think it really brings cooking to life when you see somebody who you don't normally associate with cooking actually doing it. Yeah, it's going to get quite loud. <laughs> I think um, we're passing around the recipe and the recipe. It says one tablespoon, but I like that bit stronger. So I put a couple in. So, well, we'll get your recipe down on our website. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're basically cooking this for about a minute or so. Yep. I'll turn this down a little bit. They always say in TV to get your hot, your walk so hot, don't they? Yeah. I should have done a quieter thing. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame yeah, you're not cooking yeah. in the base coat, Stephen. Sorry? I said it's a shame you're not cooking in your waistcoat because you could have salt and pepper in each little pocket. <laughs> okay, try to do a little bit of sauce and action. Oh, no. So, yeah, it's quite down a bit now. Sorry, I didn't hear the last question. Sorry. That's all right. That's fine. That's live cooking for you. Get yeah, garlic, garlic into the locked in. Yep. Right, for about a minute. But yeah, I mean, what's doing a world character in the dressing room? I'd be like, I'd be in the dressing room feeling sick with nerves. I must admit, five, ten minutes before I came mm -hmm. on here, I started to get a feel in my stomach. I'm okay now, but that's the same in the world character. As soon as I got on the table, I was fine. Yeah. So that's where it's I got. Strange thing, this. isn't it? It's a strange thing. Isn't it? When Stephen, when we get to the bit where you're happy, can we have yeah. a quick look? Can you can you show us what's in the pan? Right, the mince has gone in with um, Thai red curry paste, shallot, and garlic. Lovely, thank you. So, as I say, it's a, it's a simple dish, but delicious. I just I need the garlic on everywhere when I'm talking. Probably chef would be looking at this thing. Well, it's just fun. No, that's fine. That happens to all of us. But yeah, I was looking at my kits and we saw the pot lack. With the yeah. Pound, uh, so I've basically got to stir fry this for about three minutes. Okay. I'm turn my rice off because that'll burn. Like, this, this kind of cooking comes together very quickly. You've got to keep concentrating all the time, right? Yeah, it's, um, well, when, when Jack first asked me to do this, I tried to try and think of something that was as simple as to do. And, you know, almost off, off by heart. Um, one of the more complicated things to know. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and how are you. Like how I've done the Tom Perry's recipe yesterday. Oh, yeah. I did about six hours with curry recipe. <laughs> You can do that in lockdown, you've got the time. How are, you, how are you dealing with lockdown, Stephen? Everything going okay? Sorry? How are you dealing with lockdown? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all right. It's just, obviously, it's just like any sport shut down, so um, finding things to look forward to. I mean, everyone's, I think, missing live sport. Um, but yeah, same as everyone else, probably too much. I've actually taken seven days off drinking, I think I've started to drink too much. Um, <laughs> Watching box sets, but yeah, just doing a lot of cooking, really. Yeah, it's great, and uh, it's nice that you've got some really good suppliers that you can go to. Yeah, it's Lewis for Sunday. It's actually taking the golfing bread as well, uh, but it's Lewis for like meat, fish, everything. Um, they basically source anything. Like one year, I asked them to source some haggis from it, um, and also some uh, square sausage in Scotland. They do that flat sausage. Which you can't get down here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and, he, and he's able to pretty much store everything, which is brilliant. Okay, I'm going to add the three tablespoons of coconut milk. Yep. And we'll, we'll have another look when you're ready. Yeah. Two tablespoons of fish sauce. Maybe a little bit extra. And then just keep stir frying that. Okay. Yeah. Like I say, it's very, very simple. 
How does it smell? Incredible. Yeah. Good night. I can't take credit for this. This is actually a Ken Hong recipe. But um, when, when I was well, here, I was in Thailand, I, I tried, I hunted, hunted it down. Just, I wanted to cook it, obviously. And um, yeah, I, just break it I up shouldn't worry about that. I shouldn't worry about that because I'm sure Ken Hom's never done a 147. <laughs> Not Ken, Ken Hom's walk, unfortunately. <laughs> Do you keep in touch with the snooker guy? Yeah, well, we've been doing some Q&As and stuff on, on Instagram. Um, I've had the likes of Ronnie, uh, Judd Trump, um, Neil Robertson, uh, I've got John Terry on the footballer. Um, I've got Steve yeah. Davis on Monday night. 8 p.m. live on my page if everyone's interested that that should be interesting as Steve would say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, so I've, been, I've, been, I've been keeping keeping busy. So I'm trying to keep busy. Yeah. And so, so do you, do you, do you, is, this is almost done now. Is it, okay, mate, is, you, is it fair? I think we're yeah. I think I think we're of a similar age. But is it fair to say that um you would consider yourself a vet, a veteran, and you ever get? Do you ever get to play any of these veteran championships? Um, well, they have a they have a senior uh, tour now. Um, yeah. It's not it's not on the on the, on the sort of um, level of golf. Um, there's not the financial prizes that they have in seniors golf. But, um, they have five or six tournaments a season. Um, I play. Jimmy plays. Uh, Barbara and Tony know. Steve played a couple. Ken played a couple. So um, that, that's that, that's quite um, quite fun. It's, it's, it's not as serious um, as the main tour at all. So. Okay, this is ready. I'm going to um, chop up some Thai basil. As I say, it says that you can use normal basil actually um, as well. Oh. Uh, that's the authentic, sorry. A bunch of Thai basil. I tell you what. After lockdown, if you ever do hang up. Your queue. I know a few restaurants that could do with somebody in, like you in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, um, I did Master Chef, and I went in a real kitchen. And, yep. uh, that was that was fun getting 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 shouted at. Quite an experience. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I think I've never complained about food again after seeing what these people go through in the kitchen. This is pretty much ready. Hard now. work, isn't it? Brilliant. Um, I'm going to so, Stephen, yeah. you, know, you know that we've got people on the front row, and we've also got people live on yeah. our YouTube uh, channel. Uh, I've got a, a what? I've got a question. I think this is from uh, Jane on YouTube. What uh, What would you eat to celebrate after winning a match? Um, I mean, I, I, I could basically, I'll eat anything basically, I mean, there's not, tofu is the only thing I, I can't bear, I mean, it's the worst of the devil for me, um, <laughs> but, uh, I like, I like meat, I'm, I'm quite a big meat eater, so I mean, I've, 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 you know, a really nice steak, um, steak and chips, um, some, something to, but I mean, I, I like, you know, going out to nice restaurants, experimenting, but, um, if someone said, what would you like to go in it? I mean, a, a nice steak and chips with a nice bit of red wine and uh, beef or mustard. Perfect. Right. And uh, yeah. James, just, just while you're sticking that in the bowl, it's amazing. Um, what inspired you to create the dish? And is it your favourite? Or was it just these brilliant ingredients and the fact that it comes together quickly? I'm, so, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Sorry. Oh, sorry, Chef. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, yeah, I can't always ask when I'm in the kitchen, saying, unfortunately. <laughs> James Cousins was saying, was the dish inspired by it being your favourite, or was it the fact that it's good ingredients and it comes together nice and quickly? Um, well, for, the, for this um, virtual food festival demo, definitely, because it came together quickly. Um, but as I said, whenever I went to Thailand, this was a dish I ordered. As soon as I got in my room, room service. Um, I just, I just, I, you know, it's, it's a little bit spicy, it's simple. I mean, basically, it's a Thai version of mince and tatties, isn't it? I mean, it's pork mince with sticky rice. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit spicy. So, uh, okay, I'm going to, even, get, see, got, I'm going to uh, sprinkle some red chilies on top. There. Chefy. Nice work, that? Chef. That's amazing. <laughs> can, we, can we bring Jack in? Sorry? Can we bring Jack in? 
Jack Stein's coming in to say hi. Oh, okay. Hi, Jack. <laughs> that was amazing, Stephen. That, uh, that looks so good. Is that, that's a North Thai dish, is it? Oh, God, now you're asking me. <laughs> That's good. That's Ken, <laughs> Ken, 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 no, say, hang on a second. I'll call my, uh, the name it is. It, it is Mu Pad Pai Horapa. Fantastic. That was going <laughs> You smashed that. I tell you what, that's better than any century break you've ever done, the way you've done that. You, you're about <laughs> <laughs> it's probably easier than doing a century these days. <laughs> Um, I've just got a quick question for you. Um, yeah. I find it really interesting what you're saying when you were younger and you were touring um, a place like China and you're going to McDonald's. What, um, I mean, a lot of young people, they, they, they learn about food actually quite often by traveling to places like Asia. Asia is a fantastic place. You know, when I first traveled and I come from a foodie family, the guy I traveled with, we got to Bangkok and he was just like, I'm not going anywhere near any food. I said, no, we are. And, and you yeah. find in places like China and, and Thailand that they won't, Taxi drivers won't take these places like McDonald's often. But what the question is, is, is what changed you? Was it just the amount of food you're eating or seeing, or what, what changed your mind from wanting a McDonald's to wanting a, you know, Peking duck or whatever? Um, I think, um, so I just wrecked the place. I think, um, I think when you go to China the first time, I think textures and things can get people, um, can get people a bit um, frightened. Um, and I think it was where of textures, you know, things looking, you know, slimy or, or sort of, but, but I think just, because I was going so often and people were, you know, you know, just try it, just try it. And it just takes a little bit of pushing to, to get it. And then once you do, I mean, it's, I mean, whenever I go to China now, I mean, obviously not for, not for a while. And the last time I was there was January. Um, but I would go there eight, ten times a year. And they would always say, do you want to have Western food? And I never. I mean, I just never want to eat Western food over there. It's, um, you just got to, you just got to, you know, grow up here and, and just, just try something different, basically. Yeah, and the regional Chinese food is incredible. I mean, it's like, mm. it's one of the places I haven't traveled, I haven't been to China, I've been to Hong Kong, I've not been to mainland China, but people I know that have, they say it's, I mean, it's hyper regional. I mean, it's like you think yeah. of Chinese food in England and you think what we get is similar to Indian food, really, that the version that we get in England is a westernized version of, and actually when you go there, like Sichuan and all the different provinces, they all have their own individual styles. There's somewhere that I really yeah. want to go to after lockdown um, because I just, and that's the thing I think I'm missing most. I'm sure you are because you, you travel a lot. Is just being able to get on a plane and, and explore these amazing places. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Sichuan food, I mean, I, I love it. Um, they do a dish where basically it's just poached fish and it's basically a massive bowl and it's just full of chilies and chili oil. Um, and you eat it, it's not okay, it's spicy, but you don't, because you don't really eat the chilies, it's with it. But, um, yeah, as you say, different. It's, it's such a big country, and the regions like I've been up north to Mongolia, where the, where the lamb is incredible. Um, I was watching that lamb dish before. Um, you know, there's more regions. It's more seafood. Um, but um, but yeah, as I said, for tofu is the only thing. I eat a lot of tofu there, and I just can't bear it. We 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 went to a very famous Chinese restaurant with Rick in uh, Manchester, um, and he brought out some uh, the wings slug. Well, come on, Charlie will remember the name. He'll be on to his wine page. Right. Remember the name. He brought, he brought out this sea cucumber, I think it was. Yeah, sea cucumber, and, yeah. Yeah. The thing with the Chinese, they love a the jelly texture, don't they? They love that mm. kind of... That That's texture. it, yeah. For me, I struggle with it a bit. And honestly, he was telling the old man that it would make him very virile. A bit like an oyster, I suppose. He said it was, an, you know, very <laughs> strong in, in bed or whatever. And I yeah. took one mouthful. And honestly, I have to say, it's the only thing I've ever put in my mouth I couldn't swallow, which is like the weirdest texture. And Dad... Yeah. Dad loved him. He ate the whole thing, and I was like, oh, "I'm sorry, very." It, wasn't, it, wasn't. <laughs> it is. It is but, a, lot, a lot. A lot of things in China, as I say, as I said before, the textures. Um, I mean, sea cucumber. It's not my. If I had to order, I wouldn't order it, but I have eaten it. Um, apparently, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing source of protein. Apparently, but um, also, you're right. I mean, everything in China is good for the man. Everything in it, drink, eat, whatever, good for the man. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to say, I'm, I'm off now. My brother's going to come and do some wine pairing. I think we've got a couple okay. of front row questions as well. But Stephen, thanks a lot. I mean, really, for us um, as, as chefs, to see you do what we do so well, so expertly, is, I mean, I'll tell you what, if there's a virtual snooker festival, my highest rate <laughs> is about five. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure. Cheers, mate. Pleasure, thank you. Hey, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Stephen, uh, nice to see Jack popping in there. Good to mm. see you again. What an amazing dish you put together. Uh, we're going to bring uh, Jack's brother Charlie in because yeah. um, Charlie's just one of the best people to talk to about creating a nice pairing, a nice drink. 
Okay. And, uh, you can, can you see Charlie? Hey, Charlie, how are you? Hi. Hi there, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Um, what a lovely dish, very expertly put together. Very uh, good. Yeah. Got, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I think that most chefs who are on here should be worried about the quality of Stephen's cooking. <laughs> um, I basically fried up some mince and boiled rice. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay, but you, you're still going to be pe fairly good at that. We'll have another close-up, Charlie, of Stephen's dish, but can we have your suggestion right. for a pairing? Right, well, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in Stephen's dish. You've got the red curry paste, you've got the, the fish sauce, you've got the, all the Thai elements to it. So I wanted to pick a wine because I wanted to say that, you know, uh, Stephen's very good at sinking reds. <laughs> but I haven't. So uh, I've gone for a beer because, you know, for me, when there's spice and there's heat, you've got to have a beer. So we are, uh, We've got a local beer down in Cornwall. So St. Austell are a family-run company like our restaurants as well. They've been going to it since 1851. Our restaurants have been going since the 70s, 1970s. So they're a bit older than us, but they're family-run. Uh, and this is their proper job, um, yeah. which is IPA and it's uh, cast condition. And it's 5.5%. Um, so that's proper IPA as it was back in the 19th century. Uh, and yeah, it's really refreshing. It's obviously, it's got some American hops, which will pick up all the different spices in your dish. Um, and I think for me, when we have spicy dishes or Thai dishes or Chinese dishes, I really, I just reach for beer because it's the, the first yeah. punching element to it. So if, if, you, if you were to go for wine, would it be like a Sauvignon Blanc or a Riesling or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Sauvignon's really good. I like Sauvignon with, um, with spice and Riesling as well. Yeah, so we did a Riesling earlier for Dad's dish, which was a curry. Um, but that yeah. recently would work just as well for this as well. Right. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Great. Brilliant. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, another brilliant suggestion. Um, all of these lovely pairings and all these lovely foods complement one another. And that's a real talent too, Charlie. It's a real balancing act. I know you've got an amazing palate and you, and you were a chef, but being able to pair and broaden that out, it's really clever. Thanks for that. Yeah, I think it's also the, the sharing. So food's about sharing, you know, when you're, you're with people, you're sharing the same dish and you're sharing, sharing the same drink as well. It's sort of, it, it's conviviality and getting together and drinking and eating the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And we can get the St. Oslo Brewery beer pairing details on the website, uh, virtualfoodfestival.org. Thanks again, because that's also another brilliant producer supplier. Yeah, great. Thanks, Charlie. Cheers, guys. See you Thanks, time. And Stephen, so Stephen, have you got time to mm -hmm. hang around for some questions? Absolutely. Can I just say it? Sometimes, if I was if I was feeling a bit more hungry, I'd, I'd probably flop a fried egg on there as well. But I didn't do oh. that today, so I, was, I thought I didn't want to do too many things. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. You could it's always room for a fried worked? egg. Always, yeah. Would that, would that have worked? Cooked through the rice as well, like an egg fried mm. rice. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got some people who've been pledging some money to be able to sit on the front row okay. to come on screen and have a, a little chat with you. Uh, first off, I think we've got Francis. Francis Riddle on the front row. Um, we're just going to bring Francis across and uh, he's got a question for you. You should be able to see him on your screen in your kitchen too, Stephen. Um, but um, here he is. Hi, Francis. Francis, can you hear us? I can see. I can see Francis. I don't know about you, Stephen. I, I can't see. I can't see anyone. Okay. So um, sometimes when we bring people across, uh, we kind of lose audio. Uh, okay. But um, what we need for Francis to do is maybe unmute your phone. I don't know if you can hear us, but unmute your phone. He's just having a look at that now. Just to, just let us know, Francis, when you can hear us. We can see you, so we're nearly there. Uh, so, Stephen, do you remember what was the most memorable dish you've ever had? Um, oh wow! I think I, I, up there, my, my, my most favourite things um, to eat is uh, probably be Beijing duck. Um, yeah. I mean, I just say when you, when you get that done properly in China, it's just it's just a phenomenal a phenomenal yeah. thing to eat. Um, uh, in terms of memorable, I mean, I, I, I don't know, do you want me to tell you the most strangest thing I've had in China? That would be really good. Uh, bear's claw. 
What? Say again? Bear's Claw. Wow, that's incredible. Um, in, a, in a harbin in northern China, I was taken to this restaurant. They all have one table. It's a really exclusive restaurant. And um, yeah, we were this a, 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 a selection of really random dishes. Bear's Claw was one of them. Wolf was another. Um, so very strange. I can see, is it Francis? You can see Francis. Hello. Yeah. Where, Hi. Yeah. Hello, Hi, Stephen. Francis. Hi. So with, the, with, the, with, the, with the Bear's Claw, Stephen, at least you can pick your teeth afterwards with it. <laughs> Francis, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Stephen and uh, Francis, let, what's your question? Uh, my question is, Stephen, is what is your go-to meal after a real good night on the town? Oh. Oh, um, oh my. A good night in town. I mean, it's, uh, after a good night in town, there's nowhere open, is there? If it's a real no, good I mean, night. I mean, I mean... <laughs> I mean, on a Sunday um, morning. I, I, I don't know, a dirty burger or something, probably. Something like that. I'm not a massive kebab fan. Um, I just I just see that thing hanging up in the show and don't fancy it. But um, yeah, some sort of dirty burger or, or meat in some sort of tube form. Something like that. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Yes. What about you, Francis? Francis, what's your, what's your go-to late night dinner? Oh, mine's a bowl of crunching up cornflakes. With freezing Good cold work. Milk. Good yeah. work, isn't it? Do you put sliced banana in it? Oh no, 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 no! Try I just it. Try it. Cornflakes. <laughs> I might try. Francis, do you think it would be okay if you sent us the recipe for that and we put it on our website? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely fine. No problem at all. I'll get that rain of fees right away. <laughs> Brilliant. That's great. And um, I think we're going to. Um, I think we've got room for one more person. Are we going to invite Ross over? Thanks, Francis. No Cheers. problem. Thanks for following us. Yes, Francis. Yeah, that's great. And uh, it's brilliant, Stephen, that people can kind of interact with us. And this is really how mm. we're generating funds to then pass down onto the suppliers and the charities. Yeah. Uh, the two charities that we're working for, uh, the National Emergencies Trust for COVID-19 and also uh, St. Petrox, which is a homeless charity in uh, Cornwall there. Um, I don't know whether you can see, but uh, Ross, uh, Ross Keats has joined us. Uh, Ross is oh, yeah. the brainchild behind the whole oh, uh, really? virtual food festival. Oh, Ross with Jack. And uh, I, can he, hear, but I, can I think he's a bit of a fan, Steve. Okay. Um, yeah, all right, Steve. Uh, don't make me I think too much of a fanboy, you know. Look, like, I know I've been asking all day if I can pop up and say hello to Mr. Hendry. <laughs> but um, I have actually got a valid question. So obviously, Stephen, everyone's really excited that you've been doing some some uh, cooking, which is great. Someone even made a pun about you maybe being a one pot wonder, but you managed to, you know, you managed to do it in a walk, which which is great. Um, but Scottish cuisine, what what yeah. what what Scottish cuisine? You know, we know about haggis and some other mm. things. Is there anything else? different um, um i mean obviously that you know the seafood in scotland is, is is incredible shellfish um things like that we've probably got one of the best you know aberdeen angus beef and, and, and what have you but go back to haggis you know when, when i was saying to um steven Ellen, one of my favorite things to eat a haggis supper in fish and chip shop deep fried haggis which is one of the most magnificent things you'll ever eat i don't do deep fried mars bars or anything like no. that nonsense but deep fried haggis is just magnificent Brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, um, you, you're completely right about the shellfish. And one of so one of mine and Jack, uh, we worked together years ago. And uh, one of our old bosses uh, is called Roy Brett, and he owns a restaurant in Edinburgh called Ondine. And he's uh, he's a top okay. top seafood chef. And so if you get a chance, you should check them out. Okay. Thanks very much. Cheers. That's all right. No worries. Thanks for having me on, Steve. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Sorry, we don't cut you off this time. See you, Paul. Um, okay, cheers. Uh, okay, so just uh, just while we're saying goodbye to Ross, uh, and just because the whole thing is about underpinning and celebrating the producer, Stephen, just remind us one more time where you purchased the uh, mince port today. Uh, Lewis of Sunningdale, uh, you know, meats and fish, and also you can buy online at lewismeat.com. Thanks, fella. Uh, it's been such a pleasure having you here. I've enjoyed um, it. Yeah, you've just kind of segued into the world of food seamlessly, <laughs> and uh, I think you're about to cause a stir. I don't know. About, <laughs> I don't. I don't know about a second career, but uh, I think 
there are a few people running scared. Listen, mate, thanks for joining us. Thanks for letting us into your house on lockdown. Uh, but thanks also for shining the light on all those fantastic suppliers and producers that we're trying to uh, really celebrate. Thanks, fella. Yes, thank you very much. All the best. Take a picture of that dish. Will do. All right, pal. See you now. Cheers. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Well, what a turn up for the book, Stephen Hendry, one of the best chefs that we didn't know about. Uh, a really lovely dish. Fantastic. Thanks for cooking along. Um, and uh, we did see uh, Jack there uh, pop in. And uh, of course, you may have seen momentarily, sometime before, when Mark, uh, Mark Hicks was on, we saw Dr. Polly Russell. And uh, we're going to see both Jack and Polly back here on the hour at three o'clock. Thanks also to Charlie for coming in again and making some brilliant suggestions about drinks pairing. And uh, we've also uh, got to say thanks because uh, we've been given a little bit of support by uh, Trevia Farm. They've given us a little bit of sponsorship and it's nice that we can give a little bit of recognition back. Fantastic holiday cottages there in Cornwall. So, 